<laughs> we'll carry on. I'm probably made to chapter 14 today. Maybe, maybe. Who knows? The day after Spice and hear from Shakespeare that Purple had gone to that church. Um, he had gone to that church. Uh, he decided to go there, there himself. He stepped inside the choir sanctuary and saw a familiar figure. Excuse me, you're a father of horse, aren't you? May I speak to you? He approached the altar and was greeted with a cold gaze. Are you the butler? From the other day. I'm sorry, it's been a while. I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember a lot of people's faces. I've seen the old woman, I've seen too many children, I've seen that girl. Too many people. My name is Bastion, thank you so much for your help. Your arm looks much better, but how is your illness? You seem to know that uh, about it. Well, I was out to make medicine for you, so you arrived here at the perfect time because I just finished. I don't need the medicine. Oh! <coughs> Sebastian looked down slightly and falls, raised an eyebrow at him. Oh, Purple wants you to fight against your illness. I know that. Her heart is breaking from, uh, breaking, uh, breaking from me. But I don't want to be any more of a burden than I already am. He wished that firmly for the people close to him. I've accepted my fate, and my illness will be the cause of my death, sooner or later. You've resigned yourself to death? Yes. False narrowed his eyes as Bastion. Uh, as Bastion. Well, if I find that uh, repulsive... He said it with disgust, uh, dripping from his, vo um, his voice, making Bastion's breath caught in his throat. For a moment, it felt like the air between them had frozen, then the corners of Faust's face turned upwards. That's the choice you've made. However, I have a suggestion. Suggestion? Faust walked towards Bastion. His smile grew uh, uh, crueler. If you're going to give him your life anyway, why not let, why not let me have it? I'm sorry, excuse me? If you're... If you can't keep up on your life anyway, why not let me have it? What does that mean? Well, I'm researching a new kind of medicine, and I think it would be quite interesting if you agreed to, to be my test subject. A fossil size be, uh, um, eyes behind his glasses glimmer with a strange light as if he were uh, be coking him, becoming him f from the darkness. I suppose this might not hurt if it would help others. But what kind of new medicine is it? <sighs> to put it in operatic terms, a penuria, it might even work against your illness. There are no fatal side effects. All you have to do is let me know if you are notice a change in your blood body. Like, such as a tentacle crawling, um, coming on your arm. Um, Foss took out a small visual from behind the altar and handed it to Sebastian. Here is the medicine I made for you. I don't want your condition to pro uh, prog uh, progress before I can start testing the new medicine on you. I'll be waiting for the good news. Foss spoke in a deep voice, then began a, a throwy chuckle. That night... Welcome home, Dictor. You seem like you're in an awfully good mood. Yes, because I think I've got a new guinea pig. Uh, hey, the more subjects better, right? Want me to help? No, you're utterly useless to this um, experiment. Why are you uh, excluding me? Boring. Foss ignored Charles's disappointment and complains that and grabbed it onto his arm. Oh, what are you doing? Foss jabbed him with a syringe and fill filled it up with blood. Oh, stop. It's, it's not like it any more painful than it already usually is. It still hurts. You've, you've always uh, surrounded me. Charles uh, sighed grumpily, his usual friendly face twisted into a frown. What are you two doing playing? God damn! What are you two doing playing? A man appeared from the darkness, a wearing smile that would captive anyone who said it. His name was Vlad. Oh, Lord Vlad. We're not playing. I'm going to use one of the residents of that mansion for my new experiment. Oh, one of the humans they completely brought here on a whim. On a whim. Yes, so I do appreciate if it, if you could offer some s supplies for my experiment. First one, the s syringe like so above that definitely evaded. That startled me, you know. I hate pain, Fast. 
If you cooperate, I'll make sure it doesn't hurt at all. I think I'll set this one out. I saw how uh, rough you, you, uh, you just were with Charles. I admire your enthusiasm for your studies, Foss. I hope you share your uh, finding with me when you're done. The smile on Floss's face uh, never wavered. He turned and left his cloak blowing behind him. Meanwhile, Foss uh, frowned. Grumpy old goat. He looks like he takes everything too slow and easy, but he's surprisingly quick on his feet, huh? Well, no matter how pure-blooded vampires are, or un un unknown verbal anyway. So first, I shall test it out with blood from a lesser vampire. Heh, <laughs> I can't wait to see how an ordinary human re reacts. Foss gave him a dear chocolate and then stabbed the needle into his own arm. Vivid crimson blood fills up the- What? What even is this? I can't believe Sebastian found out. Now I decided on my way to bring Lincoln to your letter. Last night, Sebastian knocked on my door. Father Frost told me that you asked him to make medicine for me. Oh, this is awkward. What? Thank you for going all the trouble. Oh, but there is no need. I don't want to put any more of the burden on you. May. But, but there was no, uh, no need. I don't want to put any more of the burden on you, Sebastian. I apologize for doing it without your permission and for... Uh, wait, I apologize for not uh, doing it without your permission and for taking your medicine. But you are no burden to me, Sebastian. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to blame you. No, I didn't mean it in that way. I know you're too kind and that's why you're having a hard time accepting my decision. He signed and then continued in a gentle voice. Even if I don't uh, have much time left, I'm, um, I'm happy to make the most of it. So I don't want you to feel um sad about it. Still. Oh my God, this is sad. I'm sorry, but my feelings won't change no matter how what you say. I know I'm probably I'm probably crossing the line here, but I can't help it. I won't blame you. The same goes for me. No matter how you feel about it, I won't change my mind. Just remembering the uh, conversation from last night made my heart ache. Sebastian really ha um, has made up his mind. So. So maybe people I do will marry. Here are all the letters that came from uh, for you today. Thank you, Purple. I handed him the letters and started to leave the room, but you've been looking upset lately. Are you just worried about Sebastian? Oh, okay. You've been looking upset. <coughs> okay, sorry. You've been looking upset lately. Are you just worried about Sebastian? Is it that obvious? I heard Skip Day be as the company leaned back in his um, sofa and stared at me. It was the way he was looking at me. He looks upset too. The company went to go see Sebastian multiple times a day when he was uh, recovering, so he must be extremely worried. He was um, he was the one who brought Sebastian here at the first place, so I decided to ask him about it. Company, why did you re uh, recruit? Uh, oh yeah, recruit Sebastian to be your butler. Are you curious about it? Oh yeah, why well, is the only human here? Uh, that's true. He paused softly for a while and then let out a sign. I wanted to make his final wish come true. I knew about it. His final wish? You know about his illness, don't you? Yes, I had a feeling you did, too. Sebastian doesn't have much longer to live. My heart thrilled in, thrilled in my chest. They come to you knew everything all along. Let me tell you about how I first met Sebastian. Are you sure? I can tell you what you want to know, oh, but also, I want you to hear about it. He smiled at me and then invited me to sit down on the sofa. I sat next to him and I watched as his eyes softened, uh, fondly remembering it. When I first met Sebastian, no, Akio, he was working as a historical traveling through Europe doing research. He come to use the door to travel to present day and what happened to me, Sebastian, the two of them hit off immediately. We traveled for real a while together, just the two of us. At first, I invited him back to the 19th century as a joke. I said, if you love history so much, when you want to think about coming to the 19th century? Sebastian told me he didn't hesitate for even one one millisecond before saying yes. And come to your to sh shoulder shaking. It's true, I thought there was no way he'll believe me, but Sebastian had a serious look on his face and agreed. Oh my god, he looks so cool. I've already abandoned my life here. Um, if what you say is true, then I'd love to go with you. 
Oh God. Link up tells me about how Sebastian came to the 19th century. I've realized my feelings for him and I decided to give him something. Please don't talk to me like you're just waiting for the end. Uh, we didn't follow the end. Chapter 14, baby. I've already abandoned my life here. If what you say is true, then i love to go with you. His answer was so, oh my god, this place is actually gorgeous. Was so intimate that I saw, saw the sink German. He stared at Akio, who sipped his cup, uh, cup of coffee. What if this is true, then what will you do? And why did you answer so quickly without hesitation? It would be a dream to come true to spend the time I have left watching history unfold. That time you have left? Akio paused for a moment and then spoke. I'm sick and I don't have very long to live. The doctor told me I only have a few years at the most. I've been traveling around with the intention of never going home. St. German's eyes are widened with surprise and Akio quietly continued. Napoleon Bonaparte, whom I greatly respect, said those words. Every hour of lost time is a chance of misfortune for the future. It if my misfor uh, unfortunate is to die young, then I shall make the most out of the time I have left. I see. I s um, it's a awful look across St. Germans' face. Akio, I also have a secret. You do? I have the power to make you li live longer. I can make you a ice melt almost as long as eternity. And in exchange, you will cease being human. His voice was low, barely above a w whisker. Akio blinked several times at him. Eternity? He almost like those legends about vampires. Would you be afraid to become a vampire? Perhaps my offer... To, oh, perhaps my offer to you goes against the logic of this world. But I think that you meet everyone for a reason. Must I watch your life wither and fall when I have the power to help you? St. Germans' face was the tight with sadness, but I could all relax. Thank you, Comte. But there is nothing I have that's worth living for in eternity. I shall live out of the life I have been given. Jesus. Oh my god, this is literally the opposite like with comedy. I, sh I shall li uh, live my life I've been given. So Lee Comte knew about his illness from the very beginning, and he offered to make this up his national vampire, but you turned him down. You hit me as I was such a fleeting lies, but I could not decide how he wanted to live the rest of his life. That fits his serious personality, though, don't you think? Yes, very. Why did you name his passion, though? I mean, that's my question. I know there only come to give me a sad smile. I wanted to make his dreams come true. I thought maybe that was why I had met him. He told me that... Huh. He told me that when he chose to bring Sebastian to the 9th century, he gave him a new name and... Jovan decided to watch over him. Sebastian made his choice a long, long time ago. Then I lay in bed myself deep in thought. Sebastian decided how much he wanted to live that life, um, life he had left. May I should respect his wishes and just quietly watch over him like a leakum deer. But when I started to imagine the right reality that would uh, follow my heart, uh, my heart felt like it would split in two. I shook my head trying to get those thoughts out of my mind just then. My gaze is selling on a journal, which was on the table. I haven't had time to write in the journal lately. I picked it up and started flipping through the pages. Napoleon, Mozart, Leonardo, Arthur. I read through their names, including in the stories and encodices um, of daily life here. Suddenly, I, suddenly I re realized at first I just put general information about the residents. But as I flipped through the pages, I noticed that Sebastian's name appeared more and more. When Sebastian was uh, arranging some flowers, all of the color drained from his uh, face and he froze. Apparently, he saw a bug. <laughs> I'm surprised he's afraid of bugs, but he was very grateful to me when I took it um, back outside. Today, at tea time, Sebastian told me how he learned... Oh, correct? Oh, correct? Yes, okay. Ooh, I'm... Now I'm really curious. I want... I want to see him in action. I bet he looks so cool during karate. It won't... A bum popped off Isaac's shirt and Sebastian fixed it with with a flash. Not only that, but he had, he had an adorable apple. Oh my god, uh, Perry, I think he's better on, better on someone than I am. Amazing. My cheeks started to grow hot as I read through everything. Huh, I really pay a lot of attention to Sebastian. Yeah, you do. What did I notice before? 
I could tell my uh, the way I wrote so many about him that my aches were uh, constantly on him. Also, frantically, when I found out about his illness, but tried to do something to help. It's obvi obvious that I have feelings for him. Yeah, most likely. It's so obvious I have feelings for him. Oh, obviously, my pulse started to raise as I finally, uh, finally realized the feelings I've been hiding inside of me. I clasped the journal to my chest. The journal filled with the uh, stories of all the days I spent with him. I made up my mind. I can't just sit and out a little bit and buy and do nothing. I want him to give up on living. Uh, don't give up on living. That weekend, I asked the coach if we could have the day off and took Sebastian out. A one win tour, racing mostly in Napoleon's footsteps. How can I say not to that? Oh, not to that. He agreed much easier than I thought. Damn, something history related? He be yes, up there. His cool expression melted and his eyes began to sparkle. I did some research after you took me to the Ar Arc de Truffle. So, uh, so I was thinking about taking you to the Vendormi Coliseum and the Pantheon Church. I'm sure you've already been there before. Um, but it's boring to go to the same place over and over again. Maybe I should have uh, thought this out better. I I want to plan sp uh, plan something special I would enjoy, but now I figure I now put more effort into it. I've only been to them a few times, but not enough that I've seen everything that I just want to see everything. By the way, Mozi and Napoleon has uh, the connections to the Louvre, so I recommend that as well. <laughs> well, yes then. I don't think we could see all of those in one day, though. It would be a waste to rush uh, through seeing them, so let's take our, uh, t um, our day t um, time today. Let's go, it's purple. Huh? He grabbed me in my hand and practically skipping on the carriage. <laughs> A few hours later, <coughs> we saw quite a few places. I feel so accomplished. I sank back into my seat in the carriage. Me was fashion shot me a guilty look. I'm sorry, I got so excited. I dragged you around much um uh, much longer than I thought. It would be fun to have you. Um, it was fun ha um having you as my guy. You sure uh you sure you know much about uh, history, especially. You must be tired though. We should go home and before it gets uh, to fatigue. I can tell what you're thinking by the look on your face. Huh? Ouch. You flicked my forehead. You don't have to worry about me just because of my illness. Let me prove it to you. Prove it? What? He took me back to the Arc de Chauvelin. <coughs> he climbed to the spiral staircase with no problem at all. We now to the top uh, rooftop towers together. See, I'm totally fine. There's nothing for you to worry about. Okay, I guess you're right. You party more than I am. Why? <laughs> it was all I could do it um, to keep up with you, right? You're right. I guess you are. You are fine. Going around, see, um, going around seeing so many places important to Mozzie and Napoleon revives me. It's all because you invited me. Thank you, Purple. A faint smile across Sebastian's face. You don't seem to be feeling great, but I can't let my guard down completely. I had to wonder if he was doing all this was just you know, uh, reassure me uh, since I was so worried about his symptoms and worsened. I was going to give his, this to him sometimes, but I took something out of my bag and handed it to Sebastian. Look, I brought a new notebook to use for my daily observational journal. Uh, oh my, you chose an awfully thick one. He looked surprised to see the size of the notebook I brought. Right, there's no way I can fill this one by my... Well, uh, myself, so I thought we could take turns writing entire, um, entire, um, entries down. Like an exchange diary? Oh, yeah, exactly. I think I'll, they'll make more sharing of our information easier, too. Sebastian chuckled. You always come up with the most interesting ideas. Oh, hell yeah, but I don't think I, sh um, I should because of, as at my point of view, you won't be able to give it back to you anyway. What? At uh, some point, the door will be fixed, and you'll go back home, so our exchange won't last long. Oh, that's sad. At some point, the door will be fixed and you'll go back home so our exchange won't last long. Is that the real reason? Oh, me! Our exchange won't last long. Hidden with a steam was an allusion to the fact that you didn't have long to live, and that thought was unbearable to me. What happened as soon as we come back home, he dies? That will be the saddest thing on it. Even if I was uh, forced, um, forced into the issue, a bit. I don't want to hear about him giving up and just waiting to die anymore. I hand the notebook back to him. 
I wrote something for you on the first page. Something very important to you. What? Every hour of our last、uh, lost time is、um, is a chance of misfortune for the future. I think it means、uh, if you don't give up and keep being positive every day, your misfortune won't get the best、um, get the best of you, and a bright future will will be waiting. It's incredibly frustrating, but I don't know how to cure your illness. Even if you don't have much、uh, much left, I don't want you to give up on your life. Every day we、we'll、spend alive isn't it just so you, we can die, you know. Spartan said before that living here here among the residents was like a dream come true to him. But if it's not, but if it's, uh, it's not a dream for me. It's reality, and I cherish every single second of every day I spend with him. Uh, you should be greater than with every single day, Spartan. Let's fill in this notebook with. Acceleration and aid of what exciting things tomorrow may bring. I just know it will give you more energy to live. I know, I know it won't be easy to be his illness, but I don't want him to live as if he's counted down on his own death. Because I, <gasps> I'm gonna love this. I want you to look uh look forward to the future, Sebastian, because I want to be by your side and share it with you. Purple. Wow, his breath caught in his throat. We brought,、um, we both forgot to blink and just stared at each other. Suddenly, he hastily reached out towards me, my cheek. Why purple? Why would you do all this for me? I'm only because you showed me the reason why I'm in this world, Sebastian. I'm because I love you. Jesus. Oh, his fingertips. Oh my God. Okay, I don't want. Uh, I don't want. Wait, I don't want any attachments. After I told him how I feel, I don't. I still don't know how Spartan feels. On the way home, we we run into Neplio, who's suffering from extreme threat. Uh, thirst. I mean, oh, oh, I both say threats. I was like, what thirst? I think I know what's going on with tomorrow with Neplio, but ayo, we'll leave it as it is. Okay, has some fingertips. Spartan has they reached their fingertips. Uh. Finger says, "I'm、um, uh out to my cheek. Why would you do this for me? I'm just, I'm just what to you, man." Well, guys, this is gonna be end. This is just sad and emotional, and this is actually a gorgeous spell. And yeah, this is the end. I'm gonna see you later. Goodbye.